very special uh, guests today, and uh, they're representatives of some of the early pioneers who are uh, memorialized in the museum now. Uh, and we had planned to have the second through hiker of the AT join us today, but unfortunately Gene Espy uh, took ill uh, this past week, in fact, and it just about broke his heart not to be here. He was at Trail Days and he looked fine. He, as usual, was just having a great time. But um, it, under doctor's orders, he's not able to uh, come up from Georgia for today. But he wanted me to uh, to read this uh, to you to you all. <laughs> Welcome to this great day of dedication of the long-deserved Appalachian Trail Museum. It is a wonderful showcase preserving the trail's history and inspiring future generations. I had been looking forward to being here today, but I am recovering from hospitalization for pulmonary embolisms. My doctor tells me that my history of such active hiking and healthy living helped me to survive this. Apparently, I still have years of storytelling yet to come. <laughs> I want to thank Larry Luxemburg for having the vision and the fortitude to bring it to fruition. The thoughtful planning and hard work of Larry and many other people are to be commended. I enjoyed my 1951 through hike immensely, never imagining its historical significance. While hiking in Virginia, I first heard about Earl Schaefer's 1948 hike from a farmer's newspaper clipping. Later, Schaefer told me how glad he was that my hike helped to validate his. There had been some doubt that the Appalachian Trail could be through hiked at all. The next year, I was privileged to meet Earl Schaefer, who became my lifelong friend. At the Smith Gap Shelter here in Pennsylvania, I was pleasantly surprised to meet Chester Zulewski, who was through hiking southbound in 1951. Neither of us had heard of the other. His completion of the trail a few days after mine made him the third through hiker. Near hiker, I had the pleasure of meeting Benton Mackay, the trail's visionary, and Myron Avery, who helped lay out the trail. I also met Gene Stevenson, who was a dedicated ATC volunteer as editor for the guidebooks and journal. The Appalachian Trail and its hiking community of people and activities are dear to my life. I feel privileged to be a part of it. I always enjoy hearing about other people's hiking experiences. I look forward to visiting this great museum someday soon. Have fun and hi happy hiking to all. Unfortunately, just as an aside, Chester, who lived uh, all his life in Naugatuck, Connecticut, uh, died a few years ago, but the idea for the museum had already been born, and he was, you know, lo looking forward to being, you know, helping out as much as he could, telling us some of the stories of his 1951 hike, and as Larry has mentioned, one of the, the genesis years, so to speak, for the museum was 1998, the 50th anniversary of Earl's first hike. And to celebrate that at the Alda gathering that fall, with, with Larry's hard work, we brought together some of the uh, early pioneer hikers and some of the representatives of those hikers. And among them was Gene Espy and Chester. And I had it all planned. I was organizing that gathering, and it was going to be a special moment on stage for the two of them to see each other for the first time since 1951. So I'm standing there with Gene and his lovely wife in the food line at the college cafeteria when Chester walked by. I just couldn't ignore him. And I said, Chester, come on over here. So the long-awaited reunion happened in, in line at the cafeteria. <laughs> but it was still a special moment that night, one that everyone who was there will never forget, especially when they were reminded that when they met each other near Wind Gap, Pennsylvania, in 1951, it was the very first time a northbounder ever passed a southbounder on the AT. <laughs> Here today, though, in person, we have relatives of the three other main pioneer hikers who are represented in the, in the grand opening of the museum. We have uh, John Schaefer, the brother of Earl Schaefer, 
We have Lucy Seeds, the daughter of Grandma Gatewood. And we have Sharon Garvey, the daughter of Ed Garvey. First of all, I'd like to thank Larry Luxemburg and Bill O'Brien for their vision of this museum. Uh, it's super. I also want to thank Gary Smith for the Park Service. Uh, we're having a little difficulty, and Gary pulled some strings and uh, get the uh, mill available here for the, for the uh, museum. The location's perfect. Earl had his first campsite on Holly Mountain near here. Earl was just a brother to me. The countless through hikers consider him a legend. He was stubborn and persevering. I'll never forget the evening he was reading an article the fact that nobody had hiked the Appalachian Trail from one end to the other. And his comment was, I'd like to try that. <laughs> well, he started preparations, gathering equipment, getting ready to start the next spring. He started a book about the trip. Publishers pointed out there was not enough interest in outdoor adventures at the time. Earl continued to rewrite the book until he finally had several hundred copies printed uh, himself. About 125 of those he bound himself and gave to friends and relatives. That's the original edition. ATC liked the book and added photographs and published it with all the proceeds going to the conference. He considered his army service the most important thing he accomplished in his life. A description of this is a book Before I Walked with Spring, published by the Earl Schaefer Foundation. And you can watch our website uh, for future publications, uh, www.earlschafer.org. And uh, I want to thank the museum for featuring Earl's work in the museum. Uh, this is great. Thank you very much.